this is the D and H color rule made in 1967. And I'm in this mostly abandoned office building. More on that later. It has two sliding scales with two different color gradients printed on them. Made by Davidson and Hemendinger. You slide the two scales until the two colors match. You flip it over and that tells you something about something. The brains behind the D and H company was Henry Hemendinger, one of the world's first experts in modern color science. With his business partner Hugh Davidson, he created the D and H company, which made scientific tools for color measuring and mixing. Their first major product was the Colorant Mixture Computer, an analog electronic computer that could scan a sample and mix pigments to match its color. They made this thing in 1958, which is pretty amazing to me. The DNH color rule is obviously much less ambitious, but don't be fooled by its simple form factor. These guys were hardcore. I've actually never seen the color rule for sale, and as you can tell from my guerrilla filmmaking style, this one isn't mine. I stumbled across it about a month ago at the American Institute of Mathematics in Silicon Valley. I was at the workshop on discrete and combinatorial homotopy theory, which was actually one of their last meetings in this building. They're about to relocate to a new and better space on the campus of Caltech. So they're in the process of packing the place up, and while that's going on, they just received a massive donation of stuff from the family of a famous mathematician who died recently of COVID. Mostly books, but a fair amount of random other stuff. Gathering for gardener souvenirs, notebooks full of mathematical scribblings, and sitting right on top of it was this thing, the D and H color rule. Of course, I've never heard of this thing before, but I read the fine print on the back. The D and H color rule is a device for measuring color metamerism. Metamerism? Met I think it's metamerism. This is when two different colors look the same, even though they're different typically because of different lighting conditions, like when your shirt looks green at home, but when you get to work you realize it's like dark blue. If you're designing clothes, you gotta understand that kind of thing. Or like someone designing the interiors of a car, it has to look good under direct sunlight, but also under the nighttime interior lights of the car. Even people like dentists care about metamerism. Apparently it's a big problem to accurately match colors when you're replacing a missing tooth. It might look good in the dentist's office, but under ordinary lighting, it doesn't match anymore. Metamerism is a big issue for color printers, like for your computer. It's actually very hard to match printed colors with digital images on the screen. A pigment on paper is just a totally different thing from a color produced by a pixel on a screen. And this isn't really a problem that these folks can solve. You just have to know how to live with it and to predict when and how it happens. And this is where the D and H color rule comes in. You use it to measure potential metamerism caused by the ambient light wherever you are. So let's try it in this about to be abandoned office building. You slide the two sliders until the two colors in the window look the same. Then you can flip it over and these two little windows give you a reading. The top scale has letters on it and the bottom scale has numbers. So this one looks like M9. And I can use this as kind of a signature for this particular fluorescent light environment. And we can compare it with some other light environment to see if the colors are going to look the same or different. So I took it out to the parking lot and did the same thing. This time the colors matched up at Q and 13. Totally different answer. So the colors look totally different in the lighting inside versus outside in the sun. Hey, you want to hear a secret? Actually, I was lying to you a bit before. Here's what it looked like when I lined the colors up outside. That's an M and something like between an 8 and a 9. This looked the same to my eye, but as captured by my phone's camera, they look different. This is called device metamerism, or observer metamerism. It's when two different observers or two different instruments perceive colors differently. This kind of thing is super important to somebody like a filmmaker. It doesn't matter what stuff looks like in person when you're filming. You need to know how it's going to look when it's captured by the camera. Inside and outside, the same thing happened. The color match by my eye was different from the one I got when I was looking through my phone camera. I also took this thing inside next to a tinted window. I expected the window tint to mess with the colors, but actually I got the same readings as outside. So my conclusion is that the window tint must have been like pure darkening, no changes to the quality of the color. Pretty neat. The fine print also says how you can use it under the same lighting to measure differences from person to person. 
I found a paper from 1977 about using this thing to measure color blindness. I know this kind of thing may have been actually useful to some people, but to me it's just a bit of fun. A little reminder that things are not always what they seem. Two colors look the same inside, but you bring them outside and they look different. How about when I say something's red, but my wife says, no, that's not red, it's maroon. And all I can do is sigh, knowing that my wife is uninterested in hearing a brief lecture on observer metamerism. How about this? When I hang up a picture on the wall, I use a level to make it straight. But sometimes it still doesn't look straight. You got a slide rule for that? Mm -hmm.